Hello and welcome back for a second episode of Growing Lemon Trees from Seeds. It's day 55. This fourth or fifth seedling is doing nothing pretty much. It always seems like it's going to send out some new leaves, but even if it did, it won't catch up to these other ones. This corner one is doing very nicely. It has a lush dark green color to its foliage. It's displaying a little bit of phototropism, which can be corrected easily. This middle one is deformed. It's not doing too well, and I don't have high hopes for it at this point, even though it has the best position in the pot. And in the opposing corner, we have the most aesthetic seedling with the best looking leaves and most uh, normal looking leaf development, in my opinion. And in the other corner, there was something growing there, but it never made it which is hard to understand because they've all received the same conditions. Of course, there are differences due to positioning, but they're not great differences. So if you look at the color of the miracle Grow fertilizer I'm using, I think I've been using too much, although I'm not sure that that has been causing any problems. Some seedlings have been doing really well, others haven't. So the coloration is due to uh, the measuring scoops that come with it and I think there's sort of an error in volumes that I'll touch upon later so every time I apply fertilizer I try to wash everything off the stems and the undersides of the leaves with uh, a distilled water spray bottle and sometimes when I think the entire pot is just too dry I flood water from the top like this it's really hard to estimate using these pots um, it's day 61 there's a little bit of growth. Um, this one's more strained out. It's more parallel to the ground, the leaves. So as I was saying, um, there is a big soil mass in these pots, but due to it being 75% sand, it doesn't hold that much water. And it's two soft Rubbermaid trash cans stacked on top of each other. And the way I designed it, there's uh, like about an inch a tall gap in between the two at the bottom that can hold water so um, it can go a little bit above that the water table so to speak so it's possible that the very bottom inch of the soil and sand mixture in the inner trash can could be just waterlogged so I might try to remedy that in the future by just drilling a hole in the outer can uh, at the very base of it so water can just drain out. It's day 69. So this is one of those rare days where I get to film some footage in full natural sunlight. It looks beautiful. The seedling is doing very well. So uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, regarding drainage, a lot of these uh, pots, because I have all my plants in this similar setup, except for the Joshua tree, I often find myself overwatering or underestimating how much water is in there because the surface looks dry and then I have to tilt the pot and hold it at an uh, angle that's almost uh, parallel to the ground to get the water to drain out of uh, the compartment created by the outer trash can for sometimes like a minute or two and yeah it goes off the balcony creates somewhat of a mess so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Originally I designed it that way so that I could go on a vacation and potentially have um, you know, a synthetic water table down there that could last the plant for a while. But I'm not sure that it's that important. I could always move my plants into the shade or just as far away from the sun as possible on the balcony when I, I'm gone for like two weeks. No matter how hot it is, uh, I think they'll survive. It's day 77, you can hear the sound of rain in the background. Rained a lot in late March, uh, early April, and mid-April in 2020. Uh, of course, very little of that rain actually gets into these pots. Sometimes it did um, due to the wind. So, uh, yeah, there's been the same pattern of development. These two in opposing corners are doing really well. They're this one is a, a really dark green compared to the others. It has some kind of weird vestigial structure. At the very bottom, 
of the stem that was there since the beginning. I still haven't figured that out. And the middle one is sort of all curved and deformed. But I figured it's time to excise the roots of the two failed seedlings because um, according to my principle of not having rotting organic matter in there, and these, which I consider to be dead or soon will be, will just have that um, root mass just rotting in there. So let's just get rid of that and tie up some loose ends. So you have the endosperm, you have bits of stem. It's very green. I don't really understand why these fail. As one of my viewers uh, remarked a few weeks ago, it's not apparent why some seedlings do so well and others don't. You see sort of a lateral root um, towards the top, but yeah, they have a long tap root that goes down there, and I'm sure I broke off the very tip. So I'm just kind of digging around in there for uh, signs of anything else. Didn't find anything, so I'm just going to pat it down. 75% um, sand, 25% clay soil is very, very like uh, beach sand in or sand in a sandbox. It basically doesn't require much effort at all to dig uh, versus the 50% 50 50% mixture that I tried in 2019 that's basically like a mud brick a sun-dried mud brick so the composition matters a lot for aeration and uh, the ability of roots to dig in there so I don't really see any indications of ill health from those tap roots I don't know what color they were originally but I just looking at the, the physiognomy, the coloration of those roots, I would not say um, that's a bad color. If they were sort of a dark brown or mushy, then I would say, uh, yeah, they had root rot, but this is a very breathable mix. It's 75% sand, so I believe air has no problems getting in there and water uh, drains away very easily. This is my first application of imidacloprid insecticide to these lemon seedlings. So um, I've done this a lot in 2019 and even before I believe. So imidacloprid is an insecticide that will get absorbed through the root system and enter all the cells, uh, the vascular tissue of the plants. And basically when parasites try to feed on them, they'll get poisoned. So it doesn't stop the act of insects or other uh, bugs trying to feed on your plants but it will poison them and stop them from reproducing like crazy and uh, taking over your plants so it's day 83 there's been yet further development it's pretty much down to these two seedlings in opposing corners I have a feeling that this middle one isn't going to make it at this rate it just looks kinda of sad and uh, I don't really know what went wrong there so um at this point, we still have three survivors out of five, but I'm worried that it could still um, dwindle further and become just two. But I have high hopes for these uh, two remaining ones in opposing corners. So um, I've gotten really good results with uh, miracle Grow fertilizer in 2019 with all my plants. So that's what I'm going to keep going with. Um, this soil mixture is somewhat poor in nutrients. It's only 25% clay soil. Um, maybe it does have enough nutrients, but um, providing extra uh, macronutrients via fertilizer um, seems to help a lot with all my other plants. I think lemon seedlings are just very slow growing, and that's the bottom line. Um, I've tried growing these. This is my second attempt, and it all seems to go the same way. Granted, my first attempt failed. I made a five-month compilation out of that. It's very popular over time, actually, but I feel bad that it failed, and I'm very confident that this will go far beyond the five-month mark, and it's already grown a lot more, at least two of them have, um, compared to that one survivor that I had from the first series. So again, um, flood watering, um, I'm probably overwatering, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not even sure if these tap roots have reached the bottom of the pot yet. It's day 104, so I have an announcement to make. I moved. My new balcony is 50% bigger. I lived in the old complex. It was an apartment complex for a really, really long time. 
and that middle seedling is finally gone although it had the most uh, advantageous position I've never seen a series like this where the middle seedling uh, died before the outer ones did so it, it's quite shocking um, I don't think it's due to bad positioning I think just some seedlings are weaker than others it's uh, bad genetics pretty much so I'm gonna dig in there and see what happened so it's pretty much I'm expecting the same story as before but this one does have a much longer tap root went down about three inches um, so yeah this is a uh, it's quite a slow developing plant I can't figure out why this one did so poorly it doesn't look to be in ill health uh, underneath the soil line so I'm gonna pat that back and that means that these two um, opposing corner seedlings will get the entire pot to themselves I mean there is the possibility that these seedlings are conducting some sort of uh, chemical warfare underground but uh, not too sure what's going on there so I suspected that I used too much fertilizer so I was using the smaller scoops which said a quarter of a mil versus the large scoop which says 15 mils milliliters that is and I have a hard time visually believing that 60 of the small scoops could fit into one of the large scoops so I think uh, yeah I did all the math right when diluting this uh, fertilizer from crystals but I, I think it's just um, there must have been something yeah they must have labeled them wrong or uh, because I, I just looked at the math and the instructions over and over and there's no way I calculated wrong so anyway I took the big scoop I tried my best to um, take one eighth of that and dissolve it in 475 mls which is about one eighth uh, 12 point something percent of one US gallon so I get this color which is a much lighter blue than what I've been using uh, throughout this episode as you've seen so um, hopefully this won't um, cause any burns that maybe it did in the past although only this one on the left has uh, two leaves that seem to have been burned at the tips so I don't really know 